this is Matt Breida going long. And now we only get to see Matt Breida wave bye to everybody. Yeah. Really good design by Shanahan. Motion the fullback, get the defense to overflow, build in the comeback, and that was me. Wow. <laughs> 83-yard touchdown on their first play from scrimmage, and then Swagoo, Nick Bosa just takes over the game. Bosa with the Mosa. First of all, don't block him with number 80s. That's number one. Number two is this dude is an animal, the technician at this young in his career. Were you wondering why he was the second pick in the draft last night? He showed you why. First there, you just saw him forcing the interception by Richard Sherman. Now here he forces a fumble. So Baker Mayfield has two turnovers in the first four possessions of the game. But the game is still a game in the second quarter. It's 14 to three and the Browns are driving and they got a really good chance to score and this is a pass that should be caught every single time Greeny this is a 14 point swing going in the turnover and they score afterwards that ball wasn't perfect no but it's in the red zone it's low and away Antonio Callaway needs to catch that for an easy roll in touchdown and that's really the whole game right there it goes from 14 three to 21 three and now the Browns are in all kinds of trouble and here's Baker Mayfield right before halftime trying to get something to war and and, and and Bosa forces intentional grounding. And then you will watch the celebration here from Nick Bosa. And if this seems familiar, that wasn't an accident. Hey. That is an Ohio State guy planting the flag on the Oklahoma love, quarterback. About if I you know, you know. Again, the Browns offensive line was just no match for Nick Bosa last night. He had two sacks, two tackles for loss, five quarterback hits, and a fumble recovery in this game. How bad was Baker Mayfield? Odell Beckham Jr. had a higher QBR in this game than he did. <laughs> he don't even play quarterback. Beckham threw one pass for 20 yards, and frankly, it was really good. But then Beckham, listen, this the game's already certainly decided by this point. They're down 28 to 3. He's back on punt return. He's gonna try and make something happen. So he's got the ball in one hand, then he's got it in the other hand, and you can guess what happens next. Now it's on the ground. It was uh, that kind of night for the Cleveland Browns. A disaster in every single way that it can be. Browns lose 31 to three. The Niners stay unbeaten and for Cleveland, they've got a lot of pieces to try to pick up. You can't have mistakes. You can't have, uh, uh, you know, turnovers. You can't have drops. You can't have penalties. That's, I mean, that's uh, offensively that kind of summed us up. You know, we um, just shot ourselves in the foot too many times. I'm not hitting the panic button. I think for us, it's just, um, you know, we know the problem. We, we know we have to, you know, be better. We just have to do better. Um, and when you play a great team, you have to eliminate mistakes. You, you just have to. So he's not hitting the panic button. Swagoo, are you hitting the panic Hell button? Hell yeah, I'm hitting the panic button. I hit it before the season started. Because this team, first of all, they mark themselves. We talked about that, um, especially Baker Mayfield. The second thing is, we talked about this offensive line not being good. They are bad. They are bad. And everybody got enamored with last week what they did to Baltimore. And, and, and everything was fixed. This is who Cleveland is. Cleveland doesn't know who they are. That's number one. Freddie Kitchens right now is in over his head. There are so many guys, so many playmakers on this team. And he can't figure out how to best function this team every single Sunday. And they have a quarterback. That's not above average. He's a middle of the pack guy. And I'm going to keep saying it until people understand the reasons why I say that. Baker Mayfield was deemed to lift this team. He was supposed to be the leader, the guy in the locker room that was going to make the Cleveland Browns good. He's just not that guy yet. Mike Tannenbaum, I want to come to you and I want to give you credit because you were sort of sounding the alarms on a bunch of these things before the season began when the world was falling in love with Cleveland. You were talking about the offensive line and you were talking about how Freddie Kitchens at this time last year was the running backs coach. And now it's turnovers, it's penalties, it's all the things we usually ascribe to coaching. And this will test the mental toughness of Jimmy Haslam, the Cleveland Brown owner. Being a head coach in the NFL, there's a learning curve. And as you just said, Greeny, you look at the discipline, it's not there. Do you believe in Freddie Kitchens long term? Are you going to let him grow and evolve? Jimmy Haslam has to stand by his guy and let him develop. And we haven't even talked about the other side of the ball. Do you know last night, San Francisco ran the ball 32 times out of two backs and they averaged 9.5 yards a carry. So as much as there's uh, issues on the offensive side with the offensive tackles, Look at the other side of the ball. They can't even stop the run. And I know, Dan, as you analyzed this game and you were watching tape of it again when we all got in this morning at 5 a.m., the offensive game plan and the offensive play calling and strategy, I know you have a lot of questions about. Yeah, so listen, I often come on and talk about offensive game planning and go, okay, when you look at a defense, you want to try and attack it. The contrary or the, outs the other aspect of it is as you build your offense, when you go into every game, 
your number one question has to be, can we block their front? Because if you can't block their front, then you have to do something within your game plan every single play to make sure you give yourself a chance. And that's what happened last night, and that's what we've seen out of so this offense. So they didn't do that. They, they cannot – Cleveland Browns were not able to block – the 49er front, but they never did anything to help and see, that. And, see, and so to, you can't get started. To your point, then here's the issue. You don't have a quarterback with this capability either. Right. So now you're dealing with trying to evolve an offense around a guy that can't get itself out of trouble with these big athletes but we that's see coming coaches, after him. We see coaches go into games and go, okay, I know what their strength is, right? I know what the defensive strength is, and it's our weakness. I'm not going to let that strength – beat us and we saw it last night yep. the strength hey. of the 49ers is that front and that was the like as as black and white as it could be that that's what won the 49ers the football game and lost it for the browns I agree i think where all this pop and circumstance came from odell beckham jarvis landry but when you have below average tackles nothing else matters if you can't block the edges it doesn't matter you can have a track team out there it well, doesn't you, matter you, you still have to you still have to be a this Offense has to be a quick hit offense. That's right. That's what they have to be. They have to get the ball out of Baker Mayfield's hand, whether that's screen. They have to be off schedule. It can't be anything where we got a first 15 plays that's of a drive. A big, it it got to be a big play. Get the ball to Odell offense. with some space and, 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 and see what he can do. But when you do that, he's five foot ten. He's going to get a lot of balls batted down. That's the other problem. And, and here's the thing. They're not good enough to overcome drops and penalties and turnovers and missed tackles. Yeah. As right now, they're not good enough. Oh, issue. by the way, when Odell Beckham's highlight is that pass that he threw and not one that he caught. We got all kinds of other two, issues. I know the attempts were four or six. He had two catches again. We talk, let it keep happening. I keep telling y'all, let it keep happening. Let him keep catching two balls a game. Yeah. Watch. It's, Watch how this season go. Because I saw the dejection on the sideline yesterday. Yeah. I saw it. There was nobody on they that sideline saying, let's go. Look, the bad news in Cleveland is how you played last night. The worst news is where you're going Ooh. because you're exactly right. This isn't going to get any prettier with Beckham and the schedule. The next two games in particular is brutal. Now, let's go to the other side. If you're in San Francisco this morning, you're waking up whistling a happy tune. I mean, these guys were unbelievable last night. They're the last unbeaten in the NFC, and the defense with Sherman and Bosa really good. Well, when you can get pressure on a quarterback and force the ball out of his hands sooner, and then you have a vet, a savvy player like Sherman who can play with eyes on the quarterback and go attack the football, that's when you have the chance to be really good on defense. This 49ers defense can pressure the quarterback. They can rush four. They can beat you up physically. And their back end can be a bunch of ball hawks. Oh, by the way, they have an offense, too. How about Jimmy G and his tight end? This is their identity. And, and George Kittle is one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. A lot of us have known it. Now the whole country does. And Richard Sherman wants everyone to know he hasn't forgotten. You don't, you don't worry about it. You, you, want, you want idiots to sound like idiots, but you, you want them to hold their position the whole year. Like, don't, don't flip, flip flop with us. Like, like, if you said we weren't going to make it, you said we were some way early on, just stick with that position. Hold it. Don't, don't try to give us credit now. Don't try to give us credit now. Just stick. If you had us ranked 25, keep us ranked 25. If you had us going home early, if you had us going three and three and whatever, have us going three and whatever. You know what I mean? At least stick by your word, because I want you to sound like an idiot at the end. <laughs> so, look, when you're winning, you can talk like that. Here's the bottom line. There are two unbeaten teams in the NFL right now. The Patriots, I don't think we have any questions there. And then the 49ers, who have played one fewer game. Are the 49ers the best team in the NFC? Nope, I wouldn't take them now. I'll take the Green Bay Packers. Be the number one team. Look, we just talked about both in this D-line. Guess who else get after the passer? The, the Green Packers. Bay Packers. Yeah. How good are the yes. Niners? Then I shouldn't have the, changed the topic. How the, good are they? The Niners are very good because they're a complete football team. I always, look, I, I don't know if it's a new thing for me, Dan and Mike. I look at teams that can play any style you want to play, right. right? And I think the only question we have about San Francisco is that if they get into one of those shootouts mm -hmm. and, and get behind, can Jimmy G Here, throw and but, be effective but, enough but, to win the game? But the mark of a good team is – when you know what we're going to do, we know what we're going to do, and we can still execute. No doubt. They ran it 32 times out of two backs, and they ran averaged 9.5 yards. That's a real tribute to Kyle Shanahan's scheme. So that's something they could really build yeah. on, well, that and their th front seven. And that's why they're really good and will be really good for the rest of this year. I look at this team like I looked at the 2017 Rams. They've got a reliable and dominant front up front in their run game, and then they have a reliable and dominant front defensively. 
you, we just talked about the Browns not having that offensively and the, the issues that that creates. When you have that, you can do so many different things. When you have a coach who can scheme run game like this, this cutback was not by accident. This All was right, built in. But, but, so we know reliable. Here, but let me say this because this is important. We also have to pay attention to check and the injury because he is a paramount part of that football team. So if he's healthy, this is a really good football team. If but not, we just, we, just, we just know that it's coming. We know this league, and we know that those that game or two is coming where you're going to have to be prolific offensively. And I, and just I know that, coach, do it. he'll be fine. But By I would the way, say, yeah, the question mark is Jimmy Garoppolo, only 14 career starts. It's a big question mark. They, they scored three answer. in the Super Bowl. Well, Let's remember that. That's Listen, right. The, the Rams that. did. Yeah. The, the 49ers are paying Jimmy Garoppolo to be a franchise quarterback. If he is, then – there's no telling just how good this team might wind up being. Much more football as we go. Baseball playoffs continue. Everyone was like, oh, it's done. And Vegas agree. It's over. The Astros are going to win it. No one can stop them. But based on what you saw in this first series with the Yankees, you think it's, it's potentially a more even match championship series? Absolutely. If you look at the Yankees, now that they're healthy, now that they have their full lineup, they've used the same lineup three straight games, now that Luis Severino is healthy, this team against the Twins, if you look at the postseason, they completely dominated a Minnesota team that won over 100 ball games. They have the best OPS of any team in the playoffs, and they have the lowest ERA of any team in the playoffs. This Yankees team is really good. And now they await their opponent. Could be the Astros, could be the Rays. Uh, we also had a closeout opportunity for the Dodgers. They are the pretty out. But I do want to talk about something, because we did talk about Dave Martinez, right, and what he did in Game 3 by using Patrick Corbin, and he went super analytical, and it did not work. What tells you that he learned from his mistake based on what you saw last night? Well, the biggest at-bat of the entire post. Yes, we did, and its name was... Zion Williamson yes. and Jalen Rose is here to watch yes, Zion, indeed. the Pelicans and the Hawks, and here we go. First two minutes of his career. Look at the Pelicans fly in the ATL. Zion with the right hand, the power, the explosion, the enthusiasm, the excitement. Here's what he said. I just saw the lane open up, and she's in high school and college anymore. You got to go up strong, so I went up strong, and I was able to finish it. All right, so we had that, and now here, get used to this. Lonzo throwing it up, and Zion throwing it down. We're not in transition. He's going to wow a lot of fans across the league. He has a terrific personality, a great smile, and he's going to be dunking on a lot of people. Yes, as evidenced by the fact that we've got three plays and three dunks <laughs> from Zion. And the NBA game is more wide open. Remember, in college, you could play zone. In the NBA, he's going to have so many of those opportunities. And again, we continue to work at Zion Williamson showing you the repertoire. 16 points on 6 of 13 shooting as the Pelicans would beat the Hawks in Atlanta last night. And he's getting some sage words of wisdom from the veteran Vince Carter there. And he's minus 250 to win Rookie of the Year at Caesars. That would be the shortest odds by any rookie in the last 15 years, even more than LeBron was in his rookie year. And I'll say it again. I'm not saying he's the best player to come into the league, but he's the most famous. He's the the, the biggest star to come in as a rookie ever. And so, Jalen, first of all, we love you. And it's so love good to you see you, brother. Good morning. What, what, what do we make of that? What did you think of that last night? So, First off, I want to talk about the atmosphere that Zion Williamson got drafted to. The perfect scenario. You talked a lot about this with Washington and Dwayne Haskins. This is the exact opposite. Yep. Okay, you have Alvin Gentry, a veteran coach who's stable, who institutes a style of play. If you notice, every time you saw Zion make a play, it was below the free throw line. Okay, got him curling to his left hand to get the and one to start the game right there. Mm -hmm. You saw Alonzo drop it off to him in the same way. They're using him properly. Now when you get out in transition, he's as explosive as this game has seen, and he's going to do a terrific job of finishing all season. So, so a little later in this hour, we're going to have Jalen talking about the Lakers' performance from the weekend, which was incredibly impressive and sort of set Twitter on fire. But my question is, how much do we take from this? It's a preseason game. No one's, you know, game planning or anything like that. The fact that Zion looked this good last night, how big a deal should I make of that? All basketball matters, in particular for young people, because you're trying to learn their strengths and weaknesses and how you can use them and allow them to be efficient and effective. And so for a player like Lonzo Ball, this is a great opportunity to show that his he has the ability to make people around him better. Ingram had 19 points. Ball had seven dimes. Drew Holiday had 19 points. So I think Zion is in an atmosphere for him to succeed. And the really big question is, what kind of suit am I going to choose that you're going to have to buy me when the Pelicans <laughs> make the playoffs? We did have that our bet. bet. We have yes, a bet. Yes. Are, you, are you in any way nervous about your end of that bet that the Pelicans don't I, make the playoffs? I am not nervous at all. I have Pelicans finishing ninth 
in the West. And the Pelicans would probably finish third in the East. <laughs> yes, in the East, they'd be top four. All right, at some point, we're going to have a conversation about that, about the complete imbalance of power between the two NBA conferences, and we will get to that. Again, more from Jalen later in this hour, particularly on the Lakers, but now, L to the story of the entire sports world. And that's right, Greeny. China's state broadcaster, CCTV, says it will no longer air two NBA preseason games set to be played in China this week. In a statement, CCTV indicated the decision was prompted by NBA Commissioner Adam Silver's remarks Monday supporting Rockets General Manager Daryl Morey's right to free speech. You may remember that last week Morey tweeted support for anti-government demonstrations in Hong Kong. A few hours ago, Silver spoke again in Japan and was asked about the growing controversy. We are not apologizing for Daryl exercising his freedom of expression. I regret, again, having communicated directly with many friends in China that so many people are upset, including millions and millions of our fans. I don't come here sort of either as the commissioner of the NBA as an American, certainly to tell others how they should run their governments. I, I think, though, at, at the end of the day, though, I am an American, and there are these values that are deeply rooted in the DNA of the NBA, and that includes freedom of expression for our employees. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that together Yao Ming and I can find an accommodation. The fallout does continue as the NBA and the Nets were scheduled to dedicate a new learn and play center at a primary school in Shanghai as part of the league's NBA CARES program, but the event's been canceled by the Chinese Education Bureau. The Nets and Lakers are scheduled to play Thursday morning in Shanghai.